You are watching Chacho Clock Show. Welcome on board. This is the Church O'Clock Show and this is the word segment. We are ready to hear the word of God. Today we are talking about a call to faithfulness. You know, God is faithful and he also expects us to walk faithfully um, in the works that he has already provided for us as believers. And right here to help us understand this topic is... Grace Oahito. She is a Sunday school teacher, a minister in the worship team. She is a YouTuber and she serves at Cisco Upper Room Church. She's also a sales and marketing professional and she's passionate about many things. I'm curious about the YouTubing <laughs> thing. Karibu mm. Sana Grace. How are you this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. I thank the Lord. He allowed me to sleep well mm -hmm. and to wake up well. So you have a testimony. I have a testimony <laughs> already. They say when you're a conamwana, a conamwana, a Hallelujah. Carry with Anna to the church o'clock show. You're, you, 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 you're on YouTube. What do you do? What's the name of your channel? Oh, on YouTube, my name is Grace Wahito. Mm -hmm. uh, the channel is Christ is Present. Christ is present. Yes. Amen. He is here. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. actually when the Lord told me to start it, I was like, oh, there's so many ministers on YouTube. Mm. And me, I'm, I'm just beginning to read the Bible. So what are you saying? And he began to tell me that to everyone he has put something, mm. you know. And, and all of us are supposed to reveal Christ because all of us look like him. So we are supposed to reveal the different dimensions to manifest him, you know. Mm. And it was such an encouragement that I have something to give. And so I began, I think uh, this year I was uh, celebrating my five years anniversary, so you can what? imagine. You've yes. been consistent. Very consistent. I thank God for the consistent part. Mm -hmm. I have done a series on scripture. I covered Songs of Solomon. That was actually my best work, you know. After that, I was actually giving notes to people on what Songs of Solomon is about. Mm -hmm. I've done about the will of God. I also do spoken word there. Mm -hmm. And truly, God has been faithful. I have grown. I have found encouragement there. People telling me, you know, what you're sharing actually encourages me. Mm -hmm. And after I finish recording, I watch it and I am blessed. I'm like, wow. You are so blessed I'm, yourself. I'm so blessing myself. <laughs> Truly, the Lord has done well. Because you see, when you're ministering, mm -hmm. now it is no longer you. The, the Spirit of God just takes you over. So you get content that you had not prepared for. And because God is also ministering through the minister and to the minister. Mm. Yes. Amen, amen. So even as the Lord who ministered yes, to us yes, in yes. our time of sharing, thank you mm. for taking that step. It's a bold step, really, mm -hmm. and the consistency to share the word of God. So everyone, we can be there yes. and support you. Christ is present is the name of the YouTube channel. Yes. Grace Wahito. Grace Wahito. Thank mm. you. Once again, Grace, you are taking us through Second Timothy chapter 2, mm. uh, verse 11 to 13 should we read it yes um verse 11 to 13 says if we have died the saying is trustworthy for if we have died with him we'll also live with him mm -hmm. if we endure we will also reign with him mm -hmm. if we deny him he will also deny us mm -hmm. if we are faithless he remains to be faithful for he cannot deny himself and this is so the words of paul to timothy and mm -hmm. Many words before that and many after that. Mm -hmm. Help us understand the context, the other context of the scripture. Actually, it's very important for us when you're reading scripture mm -hmm. to understand the context. Mm -hmm. you just don't only take the text. When I listen to many people preaching on this, they mention that if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Yes, because Hallelujah. he cannot deny himself. And they begin to celebrate that the, the, the Bible is allowing me that there's a period of my time that I can remain faithless and God will remain faithful. Mm. But that is not what Paul is saying. Mm -hmm. What Paul is saying is that if you are faithful enough to follow through, you see here he's saying, he is trustworthy saying, if we die, every time you see if there's condition, mm. if you die with him, he will also live with him. 
if you endure, you will reign with him. Mm. And so here the Lord is saying that, I want to walk with you. I want you to be always in a place of faithfulness. So what he's saying that if you are faithless, I remain faithful. He's saying that I will continue to follow what I said. So for those that disown me, I will, diso I will be faithful enough to disown them. <laughs> and for those that died with me, I will be faithful mm -hmm. enough to ensure they reign with me. And so it is a call for us. Because you see here, Paul is talking to Timothy and is congratulating him that you have followed in the footsteps of your grandmother Lois, of your mother Eunice. And so you, you have seen people that have gone through the work, who have gone through the trials, who have gone through the mm, ups and downs, and they overcame. And you have also believed that you can overcome. And so for everyone out there, mm. God remains to be faithful. So choose your if. Will you die with him? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you endure Will you with endure? Him? Will you go through the whole process? Because I am looking at a generation that looks for an easy ride. You know, you're born again, you're a Christian, you umefika, you know. Yes. But that is not true. Mm -hmm. Show me in scripture who had an easy road when they were following Christ. If anything, they were what James was telling us. Blessed are you. Consider it all joy when, when you, you go face. through. <laughs> when you go through trials <laughs> and temptations. Because these will bring forth. Faith, your faith will be tested yes. and then perseverance will be brought out. Mm. So imagine scripture is already telling us if you are following this, this is the journey. Mm. Here we die. Mm. We and, die so and that's that not common to hear. That's, <laughs> that's not the common message we're hearing about. You just told you just come to the Lord. You know, just come to the faith. Everything else mm. uh, will just be... The Lord will change your life. Yes. You're about to get blessed. <laughs> Amen. You're about to get married. <laughs> this is the place. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we say amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, and that is criminal to anyone that is ministering. I'm also an evangelist. I preach in the matter two once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I remember the Lord beginning to rebuke me on that. Because, you know, in the matter two, I want people to get born again. Yeah, that that to. is my goal. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I also over, over perform, you know. <laughs> what we are saying is true. Yes. When you come to Jesus, he will change your life. But we should never ever separate it from what the gospel is. The gospel of Jesus is that you are a sinner that needs salvation. Mm -hmm. And you cannot alone save yourself. Hence, you need a savior. So when you're coming to, when you're telling people to come to Jesus, you should always be presenting a problem and a solution. And the problem is that they are sinners. And the solution is that they need salvation. Mm -hmm. And their salvation is in Jesus. So that when they come now, they begin to walk with him. And his journey is of taking up the cross. So if we tell them anything, mm. we ourselves have told them a lie. Mm. And like that. So we present the good news, but we don't tell people what the bad news is. Mm -hmm. We focus on just, you know, this yes. is good. This is mm -hmm. what the Lord has done what for What the Lord you. will do. Tell us more about this bad news. Why, why exactly do I need the cross? Why do I need mm -hmm. salvation? Mm -hmm. Why did Christ even have to die for me? Because we alone could not help ourselves. You know, I was thinking, if there was another way that men could be saved. If I was God, why, why give my son? Why watch my son say, hello, 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 hello so so you know, imagine if yeah. your, your, your daughter, for a parent, when mm. they are children, <coughs> will say, mommy, why have you left me? It breaks their heart. So if there was any other way that we would have been saved, I'm sure God would have explored it. So the only way was for Jesus, who is God, to redeem us. It, it is because we were irredeemable and there was no way we would have saved ourselves. Mm. And so whenever I am sharing, I have to emphasize that you, you have not received you Christ, you are not. a sinner. Mm. You, it is true. I'm not guessing. Yes. I am sure you are a sinner. Mm. Because it is by the sin of the first Adam that we are all sinners. Yes. And now by the, 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 the remission of, she, of sin by Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. That now we are made righteous. Mm -hmm. Even our righteousness is not of ourselves. That it is our righteousness in Christ Jesus. And so I'm always careful to tell them, you need a savior. You're struggling with masturbation. You're struggling with which the biggest thing you're thinking about. There's someone that can help you. You can try discipline. It can only take you a distance. You can try to uh, um, motivate yourself. I can do this. I'm 
much can you do it? You need Jesus. You need someone that went to the cross and actually defeated it. Someone that went to hell and took back the keys of life. So you need him. Mm. And so when we are presenting it, they now know that they are coming to a relationship. They are coming to a relationship. The, the verse that we always tell them that um, if you confess with your mouth and yes, believe in, in your heart, heart that Christ is Lord. Yes. The emphasis is on Christ becomes Lord. Mm -hmm. Because in our sinful natures, we have our own desires. You know, sometimes I want to feel nice and, and wear nice, uh, short, short, maybe I just want to look. But <laughs> I ask myself, what does my Lord think about my dressing? Mm -hmm. What does my Lord think about the way I'm carrying myself? So I have weaknesses, yes, but I have a Lord that mm -hmm. is always perfect. And so I always present myself to the Lordship of Christ. So, God, I, I want to date James, John, Andrew. What do you think, my Lord? And then he will tell me, I have a desire and a plan for you to walk in holiness and in righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so now my Savior, because salvation is a continuous process, he saved you, he is saving you, and he will ultimately save you mm -hmm. from death, mm -hmm. from hell. So we have to present ourselves to that complete work of the yeah. Lord. That Jesus, I am here. I like that. Help me. Hey, Submitting help myself me. to the Lordship help of me. Jesus I want Christ. To die. Taking up my cross because also I don't think mm. that is very uh, commonly talked not about. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, mm. Grace. You've helped us see the bad news and yes. why we need mm. the bad news. We can't redeem ourselves. Mm. We can't we save can't. ourselves. <laughs> Only if Christ comes and, and saves us and mm. frees us. Yeah. And now that is the good news. Now mm. I have received the good news. In the scripture, mm. uh, you mentioned about James mm. and how uh, he's uh, talking about, you know, consider it joy mm. when you face trials mm. and tribulations. Mm. And that, you have said, is still part and parcel of the Christian life. Yes. Can take us through um, what exactly would a believer be required to do mm. to be in a position to <coughs> actually navigate these mm. trials mm. and challenges and temptations from a place of gratitude, from a place mm. of joy? Amen. First of all, you have to see the end. Whenever you're going to school, you are told, uh, go to school so that you get a good job. So half of why you went to school was for the good job. You were told, you know, endure this. Afterwards, something good will happen. So the Bible also does not negate that. It, it points us to something. And in James chapter 1 verse 12, it's telling us, blessed is the one who perseveres. So even the Lord knows it's not funny. Yeah. It's not very easy. It's not what human beings are made for. You know, as we were made to eat fruits in Eden. But alas, Adam and Eve did that thing. You know? <laughs> as we wanted heaven and earth. Yeah. You know? But now he's saying, blessed is the one that perseveres, goes through those trials, and stands still, you know, through those times of testing. Why? Because they will receive the crown of life. So the crown of life is, is for those ones that went through it, mm -hmm. those that persevered, mm -hmm. those that went through all those problems. Because the Lord has promised this, the crown of life, to those that love him. Mm -hmm. And so when you're saying that I'm going to go through this process, it's because you want that crown of life, and it's because you want to prove your love for Jesus. And so for you to show that you love him, there is a way you must conduct. Mm. You see, Paul was saying that I consider it joy. You know, I, I consider everything else as done. That I may follow Christ. That I may please him. So that when I have finished my race, mm. he will say, welcome, good well done, and, good faithful. and faithful. Yes. Mm. So, you, do you want that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want that, then you will persevere. Mm. You will go through it. You know, I love Paul. Because Paul is saying, you know, I am in chains for this gospel, but the word of God is not in chains. And so even in prison, he had the confidence and the audacity. It is the audacity for me mm. to still continue to preach and write letters to the Romans, to the Corinthians, because he knew that even in this place that I am in, there is a purpose for it. You see, when believers are going through issues, it is not harassment from the devil. If you are an unbeliever, I cannot say it is an attack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. an unbeliever, me, me, no, me, me, you know, because you have not chosen your master. Maybe your master is the one that is harassing you. But me, I know my master. He is a good master. And so I will be like that soldier. 
in Second Timothy that I will not be concerned about what the civilians are doing. I will continue to follow what my commander said. And that is why you are seeing even in our country, whatever the commander says is what the soldiers will follow. You, you civilians can make rest. Actually, they are following scripture. Hallelujah. <laughs> Alas. And an athlete. Paul here is saying, an athlete, we will give them the victor's crown because they followed the rules. <laughs> and so what are the rules of a Christian in this work? First of all, they should be ready for the testing of their faith. Because the testing of their faith will bring forth perseverance. And when perseverance is fully grown, you will have matured. The Lord our God will not entrust a church that is not mature the things of God. We sometimes wonder why we are not seeing the great and wonderful miracles. Because God cannot entrust you. If today Esther, God gives you the gift of healing, you will sit at your house and begin to tell them you come with an offering. <laughs> you lay it at the feet of the woman of God. And then whatever you want. A so book and appointment you know, later. So Just God because you have brought yes, the money, yes. doesn't it? If, oh, if I had maybe the anointing of uh, uh, Brother Peter, you know, mm. I just look at someone and tell him, get up. So God will allow me to go through these trials so that he can mature me. Because every time that I'm going through a trial and a temptation and it is, it is killing my flesh, it is killing everything that I call me, see what I have done, see what grace has done. The more I go through this thing, it breaks me. I begin to die with Christ. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I'm doing anything, I know it is not me. Hey, I am a weak man. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord that is helping me. And so these things, these trials that we sometimes complain about, they are supposed to bring forth something. We see it in scripture. Abraham is saying that in Romans, in Hebrews, you're being told that he did not waver in unbelief. Yes. That he considered the trials of this time, that God had something he was bringing out of him. And so we say that Abraham is the father of faith because he went through the process. Mm. So you, you don't want the process, but you want a title. <laughs> I am the sharpest <laughs> woman of God. But you don't want to go through the process. Yes. It is that Abraham went through that whole process of believing God at a hundred years. Sarah, mm. you know, menopause lived for five years. Yeah. Sarah had double menopause. 90 years. Then menopause one has passed. Menopause two has passed. Has passed, no, and you're still supposed to trust God. Mm. But you see, these people had known something about God that He is faithful to the end, and they believed it. Mm. And so, I have a problem with us Christians when we are wavering in unbelief. That means, did we believe in the first place? Yes. What did, did we believe? We believe? What did yeah. we believe? Yeah. Because if we are believing the Word of God, mm. we are believing Scripture, and Scripture is telling us that we will go through suffering. But the suffering of this present time cannot be compared by our future glory. Mm. So then when we are murmuring and complaining in times of suffering, what are we saying? Yeah. It, it could be then grace, can we say that based on what most of us were preached to, especially mm. when we were coming to the faith, mm. some of us could have even been have been given a false gospel. <laughs> you know. <laughs> maybe a prosperity mm -hmm. gospel, a gospel with an adjective uh, besides it or before it, something that was not really the good news. And therefore you find that when someone comes on board now, they're like, but this is what I thought it was. This is what I thought it was. And you find the struggle even to believe that in the midst of suffering, really God can have allowed it because perhaps I believe that because God is a good God, therefore he cannot do one, two, three things. And yet his word actually says otherwise. That really, we talked about a soldier, I mean an athlete running according to the rules. Where would you say is a place of, which is something you've already talked about, but just a little bit more about us and uh, uh, us being faithful mm. on the basis of how we interact with the word of God because it seems like perhaps maybe most of us don't even know what the word of God is, is saying. Really Actually, you started off by when we were being preached to. Yeah. You see, when I am in the field, when I'm doing missionary, I cannot cover the whole, I, I cannot cause you to understand fully. Yes. So now, where we fail maybe when we are ministering is not following up to disciples. Because oh. how, how, how come I have known this? It's because I went through discipleship. I was told, now you have come to Jesus. You love him. Yeah. Truly you do. Absolutely. You will die for him. That time I was so happy. 
actually when I was coming to Jesus, I knew Jesus is everything and, and that is true. Mm-hmm. The prosperity in Jesus is true. But we cannot have put it aside from the whole Bible. Then you cannot only have yeah. read only that God will make me rich. It's true, eh? But he also told you that you humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord. Mm. How comes you only read the part of being rich and, and you neglected this? So I am sending this question to everyone that shares. Ensure after you have gotten the harvest. Because as evangelists, mm. we are excited about the harvest. They're only selling 120,000 God born again. Mm. That's good. But out of those, how many are being discipled? So now after they have come to Jesus, because how they come is, 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 is neither here nor there. Because there are people who follow Jesus because of bread and yes. fish. And so that is not really the issue. You come, but after you have come, I begin to give you milk. And then I begin to give you hard milk. So when we have brought them to Christ, now it is our responsibility to begin to teach them. And for you who is being taught, you also have a personal responsibility of reading the word of God for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Because you cannot say, the pastor, I couldn't even Wait, the Bible, you have it in your phone. <laughs> you have it at all. You can read it. And you see, the Bible has no private interpretation. That, you know, these verses, it's only the pastor that has been given understanding. Mm. No. Because it is the Spirit of God that gave them inspiration as they were writing. You ask Holy Spirit. Actually, when you are reading the Bible, that is the first thing you should say. Holy Spirit, give me understanding. That as I read, these words will come alive. Mm-hmm. And so when you're reading, you begin. Oh my God, I'm not, I'm not serious. You know me, when I read the Bible, I'm like, hey, Jesus, you're helping me. I'm not even doing these things. You know, because the word of God is mirror. It should mirror that I am not walking in faithfulness. I am not obedient. I am not tithing. I am not giving. I am only wanting to receive. And so we have a part to play as Christians to read the word of God, to know this work. And if you just read maybe the epistles of Paul, mm-hmm. you will understand that God is always there with Paul, even in the ups and in the downs. And sometimes he just comes to encourage him. Because in, in, the, in the ship to Malta, God comes and tells him, you will be persecuted in Rome. Mm. Imagine that is the encouragement. You will not die, you will not die in this sea. And the believers are like, no, 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 no. that yeah, will not happen me, to you. You want God to tell me that I shall be the, the next millionaire in Kenya. And so then God wants to come and tell you, this trial will not, <coughs> you will not die in this trial. Because you see, sometimes, most times, God is more concerned about the character that you will have mm-hmm. after the trial. God already knows you will overcome. God already knows that whatever Kenya is going through, we will overcome. Because he is not limited by time. He knows the end in the beginning. So already God knows the future of this nation. Mm-hmm. And so when we are going through things, he wants to see, do you believe that I am your provision? Mm. That your government is not your provision. I am Jehovah Jesus. You know, me in this time, I'm telling God, <laughs> if this is the, the time you are bringing a car, I am still going to drive. If the prices go high or low, yeah, because I have drive. entered an economy. <laughs> yes. Because I'm, a, I'm an ambassador of Christ. In heaven, there is no inflation. You know? So, I, I, I still remember where I came from. Mm. I still remember who my father is. And you know, the Bible tells us that in the last days, there will be this thing. Mm. So why are we scared or afraid or what, <laughs> what is? You know? So oh, <laughs> for every Christian, your trials, mm. your sufferings, if anything, mm. you should be saying, come. Come. Because I am going to grow strong. Amen. My faith will be strong. I, after this trial, I will not be afraid of mm. sickness. After this trial, I will not doubt my God. Because I have seen him carry me when I did not have a job. And see what the Lord has done. But in that time of trial and temptation, your heart posture is what is important. Amen. And it's funny when you were talking, I just remember the last scripture that I think it's still in the same book that Mm. talks about, you know, the trials coming to test the genuineness of your faith. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what Mm. you're talking about. Wow. Thank you so much, Grace for helping us understand, you know, 
the place of the word of God, mm -hmm. the place of studying the word of God so that we can be fully aware of what we are expected. Mm -hmm. The place of not fearing trials and sufferings when they come. Count it all joy. <laughs> Count it all joy. <laughs> that they are refining us. Yes. They are molding us. Mm -hmm. They are making us better. We are drawing mm -hmm. closer yes. and closer to the Lord even in the midst of those challenges. I know mm -hmm. our time is running out. I want you to speak a word to someone as the Lord will encourage you uh, <coughs> from your heart. Mm -hmm. And yeah, before we get into our time of prayer, just speak to the viewer, give us your part in short. First of all, I will just want us to remind ourselves that um, all the disciples of Jesus, they really went through a lot. And they stood the test of time because they knew who the Lord is. And they wanted to work with the Lord. The other thing is, for every parent, because I'm also a Sunday school teacher, mm -hmm. every parent, notice Timothy is being told of the faith of his grandmother, mm -hmm. of his mother. And so ask yourself, are you training up your children to know the Lord? Because you cannot only be telling them to go to school. <coughs> you cannot only tell them that things will be all right. And you have not introduced them to Christ. You have not introduced them to the one that will carry them. That's so why you're finding people having depressions and, and, and stress and they want to commit suicide because they are not ready for trials and they should not go through that whole process alone. They should have the savior of the whole world living inside of them and directing them. And so for anyone that is going through a challenge, a, a mountain and a valley, God is good all the time. And all the time, God remains to be good. And so he has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And his plan included even what the devil th throws as stones against mm -hmm. you. So you should not be discouraged. If anything, begin to repent of the murmuring and complaining you've been doing. And go back to God and say, Lord, I know that you are a good, good father. Mm -hmm. That is who you are. And I'm loved by you. That is who I am. That you are perfect in all of your ways. That I may not understand what is happening now, but I know you will never leave me nor forsake me. Mm -hmm. You have said it again and I believe it. And come against every doubt, every arrow of doubt that is being sent to your mm -hmm. mind. We come against it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. That the children of the household of faith will remain strong. They will remain in strength. They will hold fast on Jesus. He is your anchor. He is your shield. He is your battler. Mm -hmm. I am telling you this one is a faithful one. He mm -hmm. is a faithful God. And so raise up your faith. Get out from where you are. From that dungeon of depression and anger and bitterness. Begin to praise the Lord. Begin to praise the Lord. Begin mm -hmm. to say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Mm -hmm. I know that he is my strength. And he is the lifter up of my head. Mm -hmm. He will give me beautiful ashes. He will give me an oil of gladness instead of mourning. Begin to speak the word of God. Begin to declare life. Because God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Ah, Grace. One could have said it better than that. Hallelujah. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, I believe. Someone is encouraged mm -hmm. through the word of God. We're mm -hmm. getting into a time of prayer. Yes. Whatever the Lord leads your heart, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, leads you to pray for us, yes. kindly pray. Let's believe and pray. Mm -hmm. Father, we give you praise and we thank you. Because in the coming of your word, it shall not come and go back in vain without accomplishing its purpose. Mm. Thank you for everyone that has listened, oh God. Mm. I pray that, Lord, you will cause a stirring up in their hearts to believe every word that cometh from the Lord. I pray that, Lord, Jehovah, none of them will remain downcasted, oh Lord. For everywhere there is a downcastedness, I declare a lifting up according to your word in the name mm. of Jesus Christ. I pray that they will walk in the strength of your power. They will walk in the truth truth of your knowledge, oh God, and that they will believe you. They will walk in your ways. For them that do not know you, we declare a godly sorrow that leadeth to repentance in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we ask that you will direct us, oh God, that even in this times of our lives where there are trials and temptations oh god and there are great sufferings oh lord that we will continue to hold fast on the lord we will continue to trust you because you are good all the time and all the time you remain to be good my father we raise our faith to trust you we raise our faith to believe you we raise our faith to call upon the name of the lord for everyone that calls upon the name of the lord will be saved and so we call you you are the i am that i am 
You are the rose of Sharon. You are the balm of Gilead. You will never fail us. And you will never fail any man that calls upon your name. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, I thank you for every mother, every father, every young man, every young girl, oh God. I declare they will love you with all of their hearts. Mm -hmm. They will go through it. They will go through it. They will not disown you so that you will not disown them. They will die with you, oh God. Mm -hmm. They will accept every suffering, oh God, so that they will share in the glory of the latter times. We give you praise and we thank you. We thank you because you are good and you are gracious. Continue to help us to have thanksgiving and praise in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Grace. We are mm. truly blessed and honored by the words that you have shared. Mm. The Lord continue to bless you, mm. bless your ministries Amen. for him. Amen. As I regards to your family, yes. your church family, yes. all of them. Yes. Thank Chris you. Upper room. I say hi. Hi. <laughs> yes. yes. Chris upper room. Mm. Thank you so much for the gift. Um, yeah. Your church has uh, given to us. Yes, yeah, thankful. Uh, we do have a question already. I don't mm. know. Uh, I'm sure, but hey, woman of God, mm. this must be easy peasy. <laughs> uh, you will even tell us what a Picasso <laughs> is. Mm. <laughs> uh, my trivia question is a very simple question. And mm. today we are asking which was the first animal to explore the world outside mm. the ark? Mm. Which was the first animal to explore the world outside the ark? And just in case someone is asking, which ark? No one's ark. No one's ark. Just mm. think of that one. <laughs> Good question. So mm. the first option is a raven. Mm. Second one is a skunk. Mm. Third is a dove. Mm. And the fourth uh, choice is a Pikachu. Wow. So what is your answer, woman of God? I will run with the dove. <laughs> <laughs> you have already with the dove. I'm running with it. <laughs> Oh, I love, I love this Bible trivia question of today. My chat was in Shanghai, eh, to give my laser show. But anyway, mm. thank you so much, Grace. We will definitely so let you know what the answer to the Bible trivia question is at the top of the hour. We still have so much more, including music released this week and gospel art. So much more. Please stay with us. Mm. 